welcome to the CEC report. It's July 4th, I'm Glenn Isherwood and I'm joined by Jeremy Beck, the Victorian State Chairman of the Citizens Electoral Council. Welcome Jeremy. Thanks Glenn. Okay, so on today's program we're going to discuss two issues. Do you support Argentina or the criminal speculators? And Clive Palmer says, follow Al Gore's shining example. So today the Citizens Electoral Councils have put out a press release, a media release. Do you support Argentina or the criminal speculators? And it can be viewed on the CC website. But this statement is uh, written by Helga Zeplarus, the Schiller Institute chairwoman. And it is endorsed by CEC leader Craig Isherwood. Now this statement actually comes uh, in light of the escalating crisis in Argentina. We've covered some of the background of this last week in last week's program. But uh, just by way of background for those who did not catch that, uh, on 16 June, the US Supreme Court handed down a ruling to force Argentina, the government, to pay out a set of vulture funds 1.5 billion US dollars by the 30th of June. Now that date has passed and Argentina is saying no we will not pay. The companies that Argentina have been ordered to pay are these vulture funds called NML Capital and another one uh, called Aurelius Capital Management. Now Jeremy the reason they get the name vulture fund is they are notoriously known for uh, taking on distressed debt of countries in economic crisis. Mm -hmm. So they'll swoop in and they'll purchase up uh, debts at pennies on the dollar. In the case of Argentina, they uh, six years ago bought uh, debts, uh, some bonds uh, for $49 million and now are demanding a payout six years later of $832 million and this uh, US Supreme decision a court decision has demanded that this debt be paid. Um, now this is, uh, I mean, coming on the heels of uh, a pretty rough uh, decade for Argentina. I mean, they have uh, experienced in 2001, experienced a severe uh, collapse of their economy. Uh, they defaulted on their debts. And uh, I mean, the result was about 50% unemployment. Uh, and uh, sorry, 25% unemployment and about 50% of people living below the poverty line. Um, and uh, in the response to this, I mean, they had a choice. Do we go down the path of uh, paying out the debt in the style of austerity or, or something else? I mean, give us uh, an example of what Argentina did, uh, Jeremy. Well, they actually built their physical economy. They've invested into nuclear power. They've invested into infrastructure. They've done the exact opposite as what you've seen has happened in Greece and Spain and, and Europe more generally. Mm. And in Europe, it's a disaster. There's the youth unemployment. It's around 50, 60 percent. Uh, that's really putting the youth on a scrap heap. There's no future for those nations. So in Argentina, they're investing in the real economy. And here, these vulture funds, they want to come in and just suck the lifeblood out of them. They can't pay their debts if they're dead. Mm. And that's the... That uh, famous quote of Nesta Kirchner, mm -hmm. the, the late uh, president of Argentina, whose uh, wife, uh, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, is now the president, yeah, famously uh, said, dead people can't pay debts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, that doesn't phase these vulture funds. I, mean, I think uh, uh, another case study is in Africa, these, uh, these hedge funds uh, bought up debts there and demanded that they be paid even if it meant countries taking funds allocated for the sick uh, including AIDS relief and other things. So I mean this is uh, just uh, two days ago July 2nd Obama's uh, President Obama's Deputy National Security Advisor Ben Rhodes uh, demanded that the Argentinians follow the court ruling but as a result this has had a serious blowback uh, on the, uh, the uh, City of London, Wall Street and these hedge funds because countries all over are rallying to 
the defense of Argentina. The G77 group of nations uh, comprising 133 members or 78% of the world's entire population has, uh, as well as the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa have all uh, come and joined uh, Argentina in solidarity and are saying that this has to be dealt with another way. Uh, and uh, the Argentinians haven't taken it lying down, uh, Jeremy. I mean, the president there, uh, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, has issued ads in the Washington uh, Post, in the Wall Street Journals to educate Americans as well. She said uh, on in this most recent ad that, quote, the unusual, perverse and extortive harassment on the part of a small group of creditors against a sovereign country, end quote, is what we're witnessing here. And in a, uh, an address to the Argentinian people, she said that, quote, we are witnessing a form of global domination of financial derivatives to bring nations to their knees. So, uh, I mean, this is uh, an example of, of a, a national leader standing up for sovereignty. Mm. Well, that's right. And you look at around the world, these vulture funds, they don't care where they go, who it is. American vulture funds, they'll hit American people. Look at the case of Detroit. Detroit has been smashed. They used to be a manufacturing powerhouse, and now they're a ghost town. And the latest one I've got here is we've got the vulture funds in control of the Detroit Water and Sewerage Department. They've begun sending shut-off notices to people there who have... $150 owing and overdue balances and they'll shut off their water and sewage. Now, mm. according to the records here, nearly half of the 324,000 water and sewage accounts will be closed. I mean, this is going to literally kill people. Literally. Mm. And I mean, that's, the, that's uh, interesting because that is the point that mm. uh, the Cuban ambassador at the New York meeting of the United Nations recently said that this will cause people to die. Mm. Um, as precisely what uh, Nesta Kirchner mentioned, as you know, you either pay these guys or you support the physical economy. Now, after the break, uh, we are going to zero in on the uh, the reactions to this, but specifically the moral question and the ideological implications of this battle over Argentina. Welcome back to the CEC Report, where we're discussing, do you support Argentina or the criminal speculators? So before the break, we were discussing how uh, there's a backlash to the Wall Street uh, bankers uh, demanding their pound of flesh from Argentina. And uh, we've released today, and it's on our website, a statement by Helga zeppler endorsed by CEC leader Craig Isherwood. At the end of this statement, uh, Jeremy, uh, Helga LaRouche ends on a, uh, a rallying call, but a very pointed question for, for everyone uh, ar around the world. She writes, quote, In the struggle between Argentina and the hedge funds, there is no middle ground. Which side are you on? Which side is your government on? We want an answer. And uh, this... This uh, question of a, a financial architecture was raised um, in response to the uh, events. Uh, the ambassador from Ecuador in New York wrote, uh, actually said, sorry, that this is a wake-up call for the whole continent. We need a new financial architecture, one that does not put the predominance of capital over human beings. So this is something we've addressed ourselves in the most recently uh, uh, copy of the New Citizen that we've produced. Uh, tell us a little bit about what is in this New Citizen and why uh, it's so critical. The New Citizen really takes some very important quotes out of Pope Francis's Evangelii Gaudium. The quotes specifically in Chapter 2 of his Evangelii Gaudium on the economy. And Pope Francis has uh, identified the, the way that the free market does not treat human beings as human beings created imago viva day in the image of God. It treats people like human cattle. Mm. And we need a new system, a new financial architecture. 
Now, Pope Francis has called for a, a new way to look at the economy. He hasn't specifically called for national credit banking or a Glass-Steagall. That's not his job. That's our job. Yeah. We're, we're in the business of politics. Yeah. And we need to alert people of the importance of an economy, the science of a Christian economy that treats people as human beings and uplifts our potential for creativity. Now, I think what you said there about treating human beings not as a commodity, mm. but uh, and this this aspect of an economy is not based on money and data and and uh, statistics. It's based on a, a measurable scientific principle, mm -hmm. which is that uh, you have to be constantly uh, improving mm -hmm. uh, technology, improving the uh, productive power of your human society. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't get that at the moment with uh, when you're trying to pay debt uh, f for uh, for the sake of debt, That's as, right. as we have at the moment. Now, um, this new citizen is available uh, from the CEC. You can order a copy of it uh, for free. Uh, just call the number on screen. But Jeremy, there's another s subject that we cover in this new citizen, which is not uh, considered to be a religious. Uh, subject as such, and that is the economic policies that have destroyed Australia um, over the last 30 years, the free market policy. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the figures that we cover in this New Citizen uh, in uh, opposition to what Pope Francis has said. Well, we actually stand for a principle of Glass-Steagall and national banking, and that is completely opposite to the free market system which is just dog-eat-dog, dog, big banks, big corporations. There's no sense of the general welfare, the common good. With Glass-Steagall, we separate out the dangerous speculation in banking. With the national banking, we actually direct the money into something real, into the physical economy, into infrastructure to grow the economy. This is what Argentina's been doing. And you see the results, and that's why these vulture funds want to just suck the living lifeblood out of them, because it's an agenda by this financial oligarchy to suppress people. It's not really so much about getting money. As we said before, dead people can't pay. And uh, the, I mean, the free market system was developed by the British Empire, uh, going back and looking at people like Bernard de Mandeville and uh, Adam Smith. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the economics of imperialism and the economics of nation states uh, cannot coexist. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it comes down to a choice whether we protect the sovereignty of a nation and its uh, democratic governments to protect its people or we allow this yeah, as you said you know survival of the fittest to to take you know superiority so uh, that this new citizen we need to circulate uh, as, as widely as possible um, and uh, I think it's going to shake things up already in Australia um, just in the last a uh, few days the Senate, a committee that's been investigating the crimes in uh, the Commonwealth Bank and ASIC have called for a Royal Commission uh, into these. So there's someone looking out a little bit for the common good. Now after the break we're going to discuss Clive Palmer's press conference. Welcome back. Now secondly, Clive Palmer says follow Al Gore's shining example. So Clive Palmer and Al Gore, as you probably heard, gave a press conference on June 25th last week. Now at first, if you watch this press conference, it sounds a little bit like uh, one of those Sam Kakovich uh, eat lamb on Australia Day ads, but uh, actually it leaves a bit of a bad taste in the mouth. Um, in this uh, press conference, uh, Clive had some pretty unusual words of praise for uh, climate fraudster Al Gore. Um, here's just a sample of those words. Many would say that the United States of America was the loser by Vice President Gore not serving as President of the Great Republic. The world was the beneficiary of the courage and the leadership that he has shown. History tells us it's not the position that makes a leader, it's his actions and his examples which others can follow. Others that may be less capable like me but can see the light shining out of the darkness. So Jeremy, uh, Clive uh, believes that we should uh, follow Al Gore's example. So what, what do the Australian people have uh, that we can learn from Al Gore? It's not much of an example. I think uh, 
from what I've heard, he has a big mansion. He uses about 20 times as much electricity as the average American. <laughs> it's not a big problem, really, if, if um, he wasn't concerned about global warming. But, of course, he claims it's some big, huge challenge that faces humanity. So okay. he doesn't really... Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> think uh, the average Australian could afford that much electricity with the prices being what they are. No. But, uh, so Al Gore, I mean, I understand he uh, has a bit of... Um, some investment uh, and some uh, businesses on the side that he's involved with? It's a huge one. It's called Generation Investment Management. He runs this with David Blood. Uh, David Blood was a CEO of Goldman Sachs, or as we call them, Goldman Sucks. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's true. They, I'll, I'll show you here. We've got a, uh, an article from the Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, it's the 9th of J July, 2009. It was an article by Matt Taby called the Great American Bubble Machine. Now, Taby characterises Goldman Sachs as a, quote, a great vampire squid wrapped around the face of humanity, relentlessly jamming its blood funnel into anything that smells like money. And then he goes on. Sounds like an octopus. Mm-hmm. He goes on. The new game in town, the next bubble is in carbon credits a booming trillion dollar market that barely even exists yet. A groundbreaking new commodities bubble disguised as an environmental plan called cap and trade. The new carbon credit market is a virtual repeat of the commodities market casino that's been kind to Goldman, except it has one delicious new wrinkle. If the plan goes forward as expected, the rise in prices will be government mandated. Goldman won't even have to rig the game. It will be rigged in advance. Now, that's pretty telling, Jeremy. I mean, mm -hmm. one, I, uh, the question I would ask is, what does Clive Palmer and Al Gore have in common uh, that uh, perhaps is why they're sharing this uh, enthusiasm for, a, for an ETS scheme? They're both filthy rich, and certainly the policies, they won't help the average battling Australian or the battling American. And Clive Palmer, he claims that he's, he really cares about the average battler. You know, that's his pitch. Yeah. And really, if you look at it, they're keeping the climate change authority. Palmer said that his senators will vote to stop the abolition of the climate change authority. He wants to keep the, the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, which is a big speculative machine, which uh, gets $2 billion from our government mm. each year, and that's mandated. And this money goes into these very inefficient things, such as wind and solar and so forth, these wind farms that a lot of people hate because they create noise and so forth, but they're very inefficient. They don't produce power when there's no wind. When it's blowing a gale, they don't produce anything at all because they have to shut the things down. And the other, it's complaint, a fraud. The other complaint is the visual blight they create of the natural landscape, mm. which is a, because you need you know, dozens and dozens of them in, in these wind farms to... to to produce anything at all, and very little at that. And, and the electricity price goes through the roof, because these are very inefficient things. Yeah, I understand a windmill still requires a lot of concrete and steel to create, mm -hmm. which uh, the question is, does the windmill itself produce enough power to produce a windmill? Mm. Well, that's the thing. It, it requires a lot of energy inputs just to get the windmill up and running. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just a joke, and well, it's a sick joke, and it's, it's really a dangerous policy of working with these financiers, whether it be Goldman Sachs or Macquarie bankers, who speculated in all this carbon economy, so-called you know, low carbon economy, but at the end of the day, this ends up ramming up the cost of electricity and shutting down our economy. And this is what Clive Palmer is aligning himself with. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty telling. And uh, the other thing I say is there is another link uh, between the, the green uh, movement like pushing these types of uh, financial schemes and the City of London and Wall Street. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've identified this in our own work uh, over the last several years. I mean, the New Citizen defeat uh, the British Crown's green fascism. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, tell us a bit more about, you know, where does this green ideology, you know, f find its uh, origins? Well, in terms of the origins, you have to go back to the forming of the Worldwide Fund for Nature and Prince Philip and Prince Bernard of Benevolence, who was a former Nazi, mm. uh, and uh, Julian Huxley, uh, the uh, Eugenics Society president. So we're looking at uh, a Nazi ideology 
forming this green movement and Prince Philip personally came out to Australia to form the Australian Conservation Foundation and you've got all the bankers behind this whole thing because it's run by the top of the oligarchy itself and the whole banking industries, whether it be Goldman Sachs or Macquarie Bank, we look at the, uh, the Climate Change Authority. You've got um, the board member, uh, Reserve Bank board member, Heather Ridout. She's on the, the Climate Change Authority. We've got uh, the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. You've got all these bankers in there, uh, chaired by former Reserve Bank board, Julian Broadbent, the whole lot. And we've got a whole list of Macquarie and Goldman Sachs interests all in there. Mm. So we know who's behind it, and they're certainly not in it for the average Australian. It's, it's run by the banksters. Yeah, and as you mentioned, I mean, the ideology, going back to eugenics, one of the biggest uh, problems that the British royal family has identified is that uh, is overpopulation. There's too many humans on the planet. And uh, these green policies that they advocate, I mean, one of the things that they want to deny most of the world is, is cheap electricity. Uh, and, uh, and uh, access to industry, which uh, is what uh, is required to maintain a, a large population. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that, that uh, connection to population reduction that uh, uh, we've, we've discussed, I mean, that's uh, not just in the green policy, but it's also, as we see with Argentina, with these hedge funds, it's uh, being played out with the economic system. It's all about control of nations and control of populations and it really boils down to national sovereignty too. If you don't control your, your national destiny, you end up having collapse in your population and that's really starvation and disease and death and poverty. And if you look at the, the whole green movement, that's the policies that end up leading down to that disastrous situation. Mm. So we, we can't afford that. And already Australia is in trouble. We're losing jobs left, right and centre. The automotive industry is all moving overseas. And we'll be having Detroits here in Australia if we mm. keep going down the way we're going. Right. Now, I mean, one of the things that Al Gore said at the end of this press release, uh, this press conference, sorry, uh, he said that, uh, that uh, he hopes that Australia once again returns to leading the world in uh, action on climate change. Uh, he's uh, I, he, uh, identified that Obama in the United States, China and now India are all uh, taking uh, action. And he said that one of the principal policies in India is to uh, use solar cells to uh, give electricity to 400 million people. <laughs> what do you think about that idea? Well, I've got some figures here. Uh, I was doing a bit of research on India last night and India has a five-year plan the 2012 to 2017 five-year plan and that is to provide 120 gigawatts of extra generation capacity 120 gigawatts it's a huge amount of power and most of that will come from coal-fired power stations uh, their coal uh, demand and consumption is growing enormously sure it's true that they do have a bit of a solar program going and you know that's regrettable but really it's, but it's, it's, not token. It's, it's token it's token it's not going to work and uh, so, I mean, that's all we have time for for this program. Tune into the website for more information on these themes. Tune in next week. Mm -hmm.